that we learned about Bukit Brown that is of great importance to us, which is that one, Singapore was very close to Malaysia and Indonesia, and two, Singapore was very close to China. Obviously, our ancestors come from China. And so there are two events uh, that happen in China that affect these people here in the first half of the last century. One was of course the 1911 uh, revolution that overthrew the Qing government, and then secondly, the Second World War. Okay. Um, 1911 revolution, of course, um, after Sun Yat-sen, father of you know, China, um, he, he launched about 11 revolutions before he finally succeeded the control of the Qing government. And um, along the way, of course, he, he faced a lot of difficulties, definitely. And uh, one thing he, he realized halfway through was that he actually had a lot of support from the, the folks in the South. So he actually came down to Singapore, uh, Malacca, Penang quite a few times to, to raise money and effort. So, so here in, uh, in these places, um, in Singapore, there was this organization called the Hong Hui. that was formed around 1905, I think, to, um, to help Kim to gather resources, you know, money, manpower, to, uh, for the efforts, for his revolution efforts. And um, quite, uh, quite a few of the pioneers are buried here in Bukit Brown. So this is one of them, Hong Seng Se. Uh, he's a Tomong Hui, uh, I think, committee member. Right, what's that? Yeah. So um, I don't really know that much about him uh, publicly. Okay, let me just go through my notes. Okay, he, uh, he was a fabric merchant um, selling um, national product. Did you write this? <laughs> no, not me. Okay, what is it? 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 Chun, Yong Chun, because he is on the on that board. Okay, so he was from there. Uh, he donated money back in China for this Singapore Taoist school. So a few things. Uh, he's also from. Uh, he's also on the Chinese High and the Nine Girls School Board as well. Okay, it's just that uh, follow me, but sometimes none of these things stand out, so you cannot remember. Okay. Uh, what's interesting about him is uh, he's actually assumed really by the descendants sometime in. Uh, the middle of the year. So, uh, Dr. Hui, whom you saw just now, that group of four, the guy with the, the hat, um, he was actually here with a group of us to document the process. And the descendants were very kind not to uh, break any of the, the features. Because normally, uh, the rule, current rule now is if you exhume, you must destroy everything and throw it back in. So you just see a pile of uh, dirt. Okay, but, uh, um, Dr. Hui has requested that the, the two stones be left intact so that we can come and visit. Okay. Um, so, so, so again, there's no, no, no standard style of description of big stones. Here, right now, we actually did down the year he was born, the year he was born. The rest is quite standard. So, where he came from, the name, male and female descendants. Okay. Anything interesting to add? I think during the exhibition, usually we think the burial is just you take a hole, put a coffee in, close with the soil and everything. In this one, it was quite unique in the sense that it was a crib. So there was actually, it was actually, it was actually walled, and then the coffin was placed onto two, uh, not, it wasn't, it wasn't touching the soil, it was, there was two granite stones. It was placed nicely on a granite stone, and then behind, the, 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 the way the crib was done, it was slanted also, so the water will, will not, uh, it won't pond in there. There's an inlet from the back and there's an outlet right in the front as well. So that kind of, that, that, that kind of, the documentation itself, you know, we'll mess, mess around because we thought if any barriers, you, you dig a hole, poop, dump and then close that. But in this case, it was a proper, it was a crib. And then they, they, on the top of the crib, they, they covered it with granite stones, and then the soil was put on top on top of it. So that was another interesting thing.
think well, apparently the condition wasn't that good. Ah, the condition yeah. wasn't that good because okay. we suspect they cannot cheat the money. So just to add a bit, uh, this part that we are we are here right now, this area we call it Lao Sua. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a bit different. If you of course once you turn to the other side, walk through the gate, that part is Bukit Brown Cemetery. Uh, opposite there is Say Ong. But over here you also find a lot of Ong. But we generally we call this area the Lao Sua, one of the oldest. Uh, uh, Earliest burial ground. Old Hill. Yeah, it's called Old Hill. Uh, of course, if those who are very ch uh, light challenges and stuff like that, further down, uh, inside, there's also some old housing, kampong, and uh, very, very old housing. For those who want to perhaps. Uh, they will know what are the plans are. So if you read all this, you can understand uh, what. Um, what are the necessary steps to be taken for the descendants who want to exhume their ancestor? Of course, of particular interest to us is here, unclaimed graves. Huh? So you can see the date deal is coming up soon. Mm. Yep. There's, uh, what happens when nobody claims? And uh, we, we, we more or less believe that at least half won't be claimed because most likely there won't be any descendants to come and claim. Most likely they wouldn't know. Okay, so it's quite sad. Okay, um, I'd like to stand here because if you look near, look, look, Look around you, there are three road signs here and they happen to be of three different races. races? So okay. dialect groups. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we have Long Hawa. Hawa means sweet in uh, Bahasa Indonesia. I don't know what's sweet around here I know this. Okay. Kehau Road. Kehau Road is interesting because Kehau, when this place uh, came up in um, came up, um, the British government um, sought the advice of two municipal, two Chinese municipal commissioners to ask to, to see where's a good place to have a cemetery. So Tan Kien Hock and Si Dong Wah, Si Dong Wah will visit later. Tan Kien Hock um, advised them to build a to acquire land here, build a cemetery because, uh, as Ifun said, this area had nine hills. Okay, nine hills means nine dragons. So Jiu Long, okay, so Hong Kong has a Kowloon, Singapore has also has a Kowloon right here. Okay. So this is uh, so uh, in memory of uh, Tan Kien Hock efforts because he passed away soon after the cemetery came up. They named this road after him, Kien Hock. Syme, uh, if you are from Malaysia in particular, you might heard of this gentleman called John Syme. Um, his company is called Syme Darby. Anybody? Syme Darby. Uh, his, his name is here because right across is a Singapore Island Country Club. And uh, he kind of, apparently he helped to design the, the golf course. So that's why they named that road all the way here, Syme Road. So uh, I find interesting because right at this junction you find three road names of three different uh, races. Lah. So I don't know where else in Singapore can you find such a combination. If you know, please tell me. You have a Kiamhok descendant down here. What is it? Hands up. Hands up. Kiamhok descendant. Uh -huh. Okay, he's the descendant of Kiamhok uh, from the second wife. <laughs> <laughs> from the other wife. Humbly wife. Humbly wife. Okay, I rubbish here from the. Uh, you, don't you don't want to. You don't want to hear. Too complicated. Ah, uh, very very complicated. Okay. So, very, very so, so anyway, um, small one. Yeah. In there. Assam, 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 Assam. Okay. okay. Uh, Assam is uh, how do you English? Tamarind. 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 Oh. Tamarind. So when you squeeze that, it, it, it kind of looks nice. Hey, where's your Stafford? Stafford is a only one. The Stafford tree is over there. Is that the maximum size already? No, 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 no. This one is a oh, young one. I mean, one. not no. of the Stafford, of the tree. The tree can go oh, a lot can grow bigger. The tree, the tree can grow much more bigger. There are about 93 species of birds here also. 13 of. Yeah, can you move in a bit? The yeah, cars coming in. Yeah. Uh? yeah. yeah. Uh, Bukit Brown also is a very important stopover for migratory birds. Its proximity to Marichi Reservoir uh, allows the forest birds also to come here to, to feed. And if, if you're lucky today, you'll see also uh, the long tailed macaques who in Marichi over there are a bit more fierce. Over here, they are much more, they seem much more relaxed. Huh? And uh, so, because of its proximity, this, is, this, this uh, Bukit Brown here is also a very good stopover point. For, and also an extension of the, uh, the nature reserve. And it's near Botanic Gardens also. And it's also pretty close to Botanic Gardens. So just imagine, these are just for birds a, and, and wildlife, is, is a good uh, landing point from one, one pit stop to another pit stop to another pit stop. And just imagine if Bukit Brown goes, um, 
the birds are affected and when it rains, here is also it's, it's amazing green, green lung as you go in there and see and also it absorbs a lot of the rain, uh, the, the rain, the rain and carbon, uh, carbon. So when that goes, uh, who knows, there could be a foot more flooding in along uh, Bukitima, the site, further down to Payo area. So this, these are the possible impacts which the Nature Society highlighted also as well. But uh, I guess uh, that's not important right now, lah. For the road is more important. Okay, one of the reasons why we have you know the star fruit tree and uh, some tree here is, be is because uh, along this road there used to be villages. Yeah. yeah people used to stay here. Uh, half of them are related one way or another to the trade <coughs> of uh, tomb, 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 tomb making and tomb maintenance. Okay. So um, actually sometimes we still see um, older folks coming here to pluck all these spices and stuff because you know they, they probably know where they are grown. So they still come here. And uh, rumor has it that uh, the Adam Hawker Centre. Uh, some of the stuff comes from here. Then how they all go and go and eat anything? Still real one now. The leaf. So what you do is the you boil it, becomes sticky, and you apply it on the skin. Oh. What is zima? Yeah. Wow. Didn't know that. See, we learn something new every day. Shall we move inside?